action. Okay, here we are. We're going to take a nifty lift apart. Um, going to put a new cleat in here because, or a clevis, and I wanted to show you the new stainless steel swivel that we've got available. It is not for lifting, even though it has a uh, brake strength of over a thousand pounds. Um, it's still not for lifting, so <clears throat> we want to keep the lawyers away. Anyway, break loose the uh, main screws. Break loose the other two cap screws. Now, what you can do is, if by some possibility you wind up with the cord having been pulled out, and I'll pull it out here deliberately, it is possible under stress that you can pull a um, handhold, if you will, through the pulley. This is a brand new one, so it's maybe not going to fit, but yes, it will. Okay, if you really work at it, you can get it pulled out. And if that happens, you have to repair it. So, what I'm going to do is take you right through from one end to the other on how to string the nifty lift back together. Like I say, you can pull a cord all the way out. But it's not advisable, obviously. So, I will show you how we assemble them here at our world headquarters with Mark Knopfler playing in the background because I like to enjoy myself. So, these are the main screws, these are the outer cap screws. Do, 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 do. Now what I do is I flip it over so that the threaded section is like that. Now we have our Delrin spacer, which is in here, and it will only go back in one way. You've got your two bearings on this sheave and two bearings on this sheave. I'm going to change the uh, galvanized clevis for a stainless steel one. So when you when we originally thread it, we take the line. The short eyelet, or the very small eyelet, goes down through the locking mechanism, and I'll see if I can get it to feed through. Okay, feeds through. Now, the dilemma is, is that you're feeding it through the locking cleat. So, what I do is I take the two bearings and the screw and the spacer that's in there. I thread the screw into this side, all the way in, so that I can then Place this on the on the surface. Put a bearing in there. Don't miss the spacer. Very important. And you line the cord up around the bearing. At that point, I then take and add your del run back in. And it, like I say, it will only fit one way. If it doesn't fit down into the groove, it's wrong. Take your other bearing, put 
put it on top there. Then you take the cord, and I usually like to try and keep it straight. You bring it around a second loop over the top bearing, and then without going through anything, you put it on that stud right there. Now, you come along with your other piece, put your swivel in there, and I've got a swivel on this particular model. Uh, I think I used this one, but that's all right, doesn't matter. Okay, so now, kind of hold all of the cords in here make sure that they go around the bearings okay and you should be able to move them and feel them move back and forth now because you've used the threaded section on the other end you now put your cap screws your end cap screws together Tighten the cap screws down, not, not torquing them, just tighten them. Now you're left with two pieces of rope, one on the bottom pulley and one on the top bearing, if you will. Now you take your other bottom sheave, if you will, and because you're in this mode, or this direction, I do the same thing twice. a little bit backwards but it was the only way we could get the cleat to work tighten the screw up put a bearing on find the shim put the shim on the second bearing okay now you down run again in here Again, you need to make sure that it fits down in the groove. If it doesn't, you need to make sure it does. So, it'll almost snap down in, but you don't need the Delvin yet. What you do need is you need the bottom set of rope, and you put it around the bottom bearing. And you slide it down in the groove there. Now you take your Delrin, put your Delrin in, okay, now it moves around the bearing, you take the top piece, you put it around the top bearing, now you take your clevis and the other half of your nifty lift, put them down tight. Put your cap screws in. Once you've got your cap screws in, now you can flip it over, take your large center screws, but what you want to do is be careful when you take this out. Hold it and don't tip it over because that shim that's in the middle between the bearings might shift and you don't want that to happen until after the screw is in there. Then once the screw's in, you tighten it in. Same thing on this one. Back the screw out. I say I take it, slide the screw up, it'll go through the shim and the bearing. And you roll it over and tighten it. Now before tightening, what I do is I typically will test it a little bit 
Make sure it's sliding nice and easy. The roller bearings are going nice and easy. Your lines are all lined up. Okay. Torque it. And there is no torque, if you will. I just tighten it to the point where I feel comfortable it's not going to come loose on its own. Assembly of an Ifni Lift Deluxe model. And if you want to test it, you can test it, hold the line up. You should be able to move it. Lines shouldn't cross each other except in this one location. Other than that, everybody should line up straight. So, if you've got any problems, feel free to call me. Area code 603 401 4966. My name is Albert Peel, and I would be happy to walk you through this if you need to. Like I say, um, typically what I would do if I were an end user, or I do when I do it, I tie just a simple knot because then that way the line cannot go through. But when we braid the, the handhold here so you can pull it, that will fit through. So if you run into any problems, like I say, give me a call, area code 603-401-4966. Thank you.